This is a talk in a series which I'm calling Natural Theology. In this talk, we'll just explore some concepts that we'll use to think about the natural world. So let's imagine a car or a home or a table, and we'll label these objects component objects. Component because they have parts. The car has a windshield and tires, a home has a roof and a door, a table has legs and a top. They have parts. So they're component objects, component things. A component object requires more than parts to be what it is. It requires that those parts have the proper relation to each other. So if a car were completely disassembled, every screw, nut, and bolt, and whatever, every individual part was disassembled and put in a pile. That pile is not a car. It has the components of a car, but the components are in the proper relationship to each other. More simply, consider a table. If a table has its legs attached uh, so that the table lies flat on the ground, it's not a table. If the legs are detached and one goes north and one goes south and east and west, and it's not a table anymore. The parts exist, but the table does not exist. For a table to exist, the top and the legs have to exist, and the legs have to have the proper, proper relation to the table, top, and to each other. Same thing with a home. Now, component objects have what could be called relative existence, just because that their components need to be in the proper relation relative to each other, that the relation of the components is important as well as the components themselves. And because the table depends on its components and on their proper relation, we could say the table has dependent existence. Its existence depends on something. So we have component object, something has parts. A component object has relative existence because the parts have to be in the proper relation to each other for the object to exist. And because we have an existence that depends on a relation as well as parts, we have a dependent existence. Okay. Another concept that can apply to these three that we just mentioned, the component object, the relative existence and the dependent existence. Another concept is act. And that's act in a broad sense. So in other words, here is my fist right over there. And if I open my hand, the palm and the fingers are there, but the fist is not. The fist has to have the proper relation. The fingers and the thumb have to have the proper relation to each other for a fist to exist. So think of me holding my hand like that. That's an act. I'm, I am performing an act. I would be holding my hand maybe that way for five minutes, 10 minutes. So the act of holding my hand in the shape of a fist creates the fist. And so we could think of the act of the components staying in proper relation as the component moves through time. So we can think of a table as an act, the act of the four, the four legs and the top, tabletop, the five components keeping the same relation to each other as the table moves through time. You can consider that an act, an action. Now, the idea of component object, if you think of that, it's easy to think, well, maybe are there any objects which don't have components, don't have parts? Water doesn't seem to have parts. It just seems to be water. But we're told that water is actually two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. And those molecules have to remain in the right relation to each other, as I understand it from my college chemistry. If I remember correctly, the two hydrogen atoms come off the oxygen atom at a 105 degree angle. If chemically that could exist as maybe hydrogen, hydrogen with atom on uh, oxygen on the end, if that could exist chemically, it wouldn't be water. It's just like, even, even to go to step further, it's exact same elements, carbon atoms, 
arranged one way, it's the lead in your pencil. It's the soot that you get on your, your pants when you're near a fireplace. Arranged another way, it's diamonds. So you can consider a diamond as an act, the act of the carbon atoms keeping the proper relation through to each other as they go through time. Uh, as it also would have relative existence and dependent existence. But okay, is there anything that doesn't have parts? The atoms have parts. Subatomic particles have parts. Quarks? Well, we don't know. We don't know. If something does not have parts, it does not have relative existence. Not that it's indestructible. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it, its existence does not depend on a relation of parts simply because it does not have parts. And in that sense, it would not have dependent existence. It would not depend on the parts and, and its relation and the relation of the parts. It would just be something pure and simple and it exists. So if we think of something, is there something pure and simple that doesn't have relative existence, that doesn't have dependent existence, what would be the opposite of relative? Absolute existence, I suppose. Absolute existence is the opposite of relative existence. And the opposite of dependent existence would be independent existence. Opposite of act, static, unchanging. Now, another question is, do we ever reach bottom? Like we just mentioned, we can start with the table, go to wood, and then we went through atoms and subatomic particles and quarks. Is there ever an ultimate ground of existence? Well, what we're doing here is laying the basis for discussing natural theology by presenting some concepts that apply to the natural world in, in a philosophical way. But these are just, there's no scripture, there's no uh, religion involved. This is just pure uh, philosophy. And it's a way of thinking about the natural world, which I don't think is invalid, except how do we know that an ultimate ground of existence exists? I mean, at one time, we felt that the earth had to be resting on something, right? We stand on the earth, the earth must, itself must be resting on something. And the fact that it's just floating in space without a support, well, it took us a while to realize that. Is it possible that all of existence, in some sense, floats in space. There's no ultimate ground of existence. You just keep going and, I, I don't know. Good question. But anyway, we've outlined some concepts. Component object and an object that doesn't have components. It's just pure and simple, one thing. Relative existence, absolute existence. Dependent existence and independent existence. Act and maybe something static, I don't know. And then we've talked about the ultimate ground of existence. So uh, thank you.